<laughs> Good evening. Hello. How's your voice? Oh, Jane Peterson is entering. Probably not Jane, probably Gary. Yeah. Hello, Jerry. Hello, Tom. And Jane. Hi. Hi, Gary. Hi, Hank. Hey. Hey, there. Hey. Hi. Great. Yeah. <laughs> Our guest speaker. She, she, heard the, she heard the strange voices in her living room. <laughs> Astro dog. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Gary, how's your voice here? Mine's good. Voice. A little bit weak. Oh, it is? No, you're oh. fine. Oh. So, it's okay He's now. Fine. Okay. I guess I can turn my audio up. Yeah. Very good. Are we waiting for more people? Yeah, probably. Yeah. Good. If Two you more want your jokes, now's the time to tell them. <laughs> you got a million of them every day you send a funny attachment yeah yeah what's with the ducks on jupiter what's with that <laughs> i don't know i just saw that on facebook and it kind of at first glance if you squint it looks like uh jupiter but then it's just a picture of of bands going off in the distance and the ducks in the water well it's like a telescope view yeah yeah I may not have sent that one to you, Gary. Oh, I don't recall. Yeah. Do, do, do. In case you're wondering who does my hair. Yeah, I was wondering. Uh, Pat does it. And if the wind is blowing right, it looks balanced. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Otherwise, you go outside and fall over. Yeah, right, you have to pull. Yeah. So I wear a hat a lot. I do all the time. Yeah. I don't like my hair. Not much you can do about it. Well, yeah, I guess you can shave it off. Shave it, yeah. Dye it. Going back. Dial it. Bob Grunberg coming up. Hey, Bob. Good to see you. Let's see. Hank is coming in for a second time. What's that? Why are you coming in twice, Hank? Uh, because I've, I've got my presentation on my laptop. And uh -huh. I, uh, the camera is on the Android. It's on a Galaxy Tab A. Hmm. Interesting. Audio. OK. There's six of us so far. Let's see. Let's see if I share my screen. Yeah. I can share my photo. Let's see. Share Jerry's ducks there. Oh, that's the picture. Oh, that's right. funny. See, it looks kind of like Jupiter. But it's just ducks on a pond. <laughs> yep. through, a, through a circle. Yeah, circular aperture. All right, how do I get back? Back, 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 back. Oh, how do I? I think Bill will join. Um, not sure where he is. He was, um, I guess he met with Hank last night, got the telescope, and then uh, spent the night here. And we did a little uh, playing around with my oh. telescope, and then he headed out this morning. Okay. Where is here? That's what? Where is here? Uh, here at, on the Mesa in Santa Barbara. Oh, and then okay. uh, he, he lives in Westwood, though, so he went back yeah. to Westwood. Okay. Well, I used to live in Westwood. It's a cool town. Yeah. So, so Jerry, you... when you – can I ask a question? Jerry, when you used to drive up to Mount Wilson, what kind of vehicle were you using? That um, – I was in high school. And I used the first car I ever owned, which was a, a little black four-door Renault Dolphine. Hmm. Wide oh, open, wow. it could do, if the wind was with it, it could do 60 miles an hour. <laughs> and it took me a while to get up the hill. Huh. So. How, many, how many people could repair a Renault? 
How many what? How many people could, could know how to repair a Renault? I don't know. It seemed pretty simple. Everybody seemed to know how to do it. When parts would fall off, I just put them back on and we go. It was a very simple thing. I finally sold it. The un, my dad didn't believe I would ever get it, the price I asked for it, but I did. I sold it for $125. How long ago? Long ago. It was 1967, because I bought a brand new 1967 Volkswagen Beetle. The best year they made them, because it was the last year before they put the smog device on them, and it was the first year with the big 1500 engine. Hmm. So we used that to go up and down to the Sierras and backpack and hike all the time. Hmm. We could fit um, three people and three backpacks in the car. We'd stop in Lone Pine at the Foster Freeze on the way up or down, and we'd get out of the car, and the car wouldn't turn off. It was still dieseling. And then when we'd get our ice creams and come back to the car, the car was still dieseling, so we just turned the ignition back on and take off. <laughs> you could do anything with that car, and it just kept going. Oh. You might say there was no stopping. There was, yeah, my dad claimed I didn't need any brake work because I never used the brakes. If I put up, if I put a bale of hay in our backyard and one out at the San, uh, Northridge, then I only stopped twice, once at each end of the journey, so. I thought that was the definition of a Russian car, no brakes, you know. <laughs> no brakes, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, I've heard that. And the Yugo also, the cutting edge of servo Croatian <laughs> technology. Why do I have a uh, from Bill Gruneberg to everyone? I just sent a message. Uh, I wanted everybody to know how grateful I am to. Oh, how do you say your last name? Is it uh, Aling or Aling or? Yeah, it's it's Aling. It's a Dutch name, so yeah. Aling. Yeah. Well, I just I was just telling him, and I wanted everybody to know. You know, he he because of last week's meeting where I had to confess I I don't own a telescope. He just gave me a telescope, and I went up um, last night to get it, and tonight I just set it up and. Took a look at the moon and it's just gorgeous. Now, where are you? Because you've got this nice castle behind you. I know. I Well, I also do some some acting and I, I was in a Shakespearean reading of Henry V recently. And so that I, that's left over from that. Um, that's, that's um, you know, somewhere in northern France, I think. Okay. Um, but, uh, yeah, no, I'm in Los Angeles, though. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. yeah. I want, want to remind everybody, you can turn on your chat function and put in maybe questions without interrupting other people and just okay. keep that chat on. Good idea. And that might be a good way to go so people can see questions that someone might su submit while someone's talking. I might like to point out also that the club does own a number of telescopes, all of which are available for loan, either short term that evening or for long term loan. We have okay. things like, a, I think, an 11 inch Dobb. Is that right? Tom? It's 12, 12, 12 inch. But it's for it's pretty pretty clumsy, big big yeah. heavy unit, and most of our scopes are pre pretty big. So. But star party time, need to do, we need to do star parties like twice a month at the museum. That'd be nice. Yeah, once we get back out of this COVID thing. Hi, Mike. Hey, how's it going? Good. We did something uh, risky. We, we drove all the way up to uh, Placerville a little bit uh, after that and went to Apple Hill, went to a couple of uh, fruit places and went back. <laughs> this is the first time we've gone on a long trip. Long, long time. What did you pick up at fruit stands? Did you pick something up at fruit stands? Everything that's not healthy, believe me. Well, Good. apple maybe, apples, maybe if, you, if you consider it an apple pie, and uh, dark chocolate toffee and caramel popcorn and you know all the healthy items you know you know okay. what can i say stress eating <laughs> so anyway the new guy here is uh gary peterson even though the name tag says jane peterson he's a longtime member of the club and um he built recently built a 10 inch newtonian and has been using that quite a bit. He's in the, used to be in the Central Coast Astronomy Club, but now is a member of the Santa Barbara AU. So, and he lives in Napomo, which has the same fog problem that we have here in Goleta. 
I think I'm the only person in the Pomo. I can't find anybody else. I can't find anybody else who does astronomy in the Pomo. Well, this is a Zoom astronomy. Welcome to the club. Yeah. So we have a presentation tonight. Someone was going to present something, Hank. Yeah, I was going to present something because last time, well, I'm, I'm actually brand new here myself. and <laughs> um, So it's not my intention to be overly formal with a presentation or anything like that, but it's the only way. We're very can... informal. And, sorry? We're very informal. Oh, yeah, I, I know, I know. But anyway, it's a way to uh, to express myself somewhat coherently <laughs> without slides. It's kind of difficult. But uh, since um, um, Bill, uh, Bill and Bob, I think they both brought up that they wanted to do some control uh, of a Dobsonian or some other stuff and so on. And meanwhile, um, uh, Bill and I uh, called, Bob and I called, sorry, I mixed them up. <laughs> First I yeah, thought it was okay. only one Grunenberg, but uh, later on I, I found out there were two. So I, I sent one email, I don't know, <laughs> probably randomly to the wrong place, but they coordinate well. So anyway, okay, so um, I've got this little, I do. I, do. I have to share oh, my I screen in just a second. Uh, hold on a sec. Uh, uh, there's this little icon here, share screen. Okay. Um, now I'm looking for my desktop. I, I guess. Uh, okay. Where's my desktop? It should be on there somewhere, right? Advanced mouse, universal on screen keyboard ready to inbox. I don't see the desktop on there. That should be on there. Oh, share. Uh, yeah, you want to share your well, screen. I'll I'll, I'll just share my presentation. That, that should work too. You should see this, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Starting. Yeah. There we go. Yeah, there we go. There we go. Good job. Okay. So one more click. Okay. Now we're in business. Okay. Yeah. We can see that. Okay. So it's uh, um, about um, yeah. Most of my the fun in astrophotography for me is just building stuff. Not so much the astrophotography itself or the the viewing itself. I just like to play with it and if it works it's great so um, <laughs> so yeah I started uh, in a simple way with simple motors and and uh, uh, just for just to be able to track something with a camera or with the Dobsonian uh, later on I started using the Raspberry Pi for uh, auto guiding and um, uh, then later on I went to much later on I went to on step I, I got a lost Mandy mount and uh, I'll tell you all about that a little bit. So it's about stepper motors, uh, tracking and go to and uh, Arduinos and Raspberry Pis. So um, this is uh, your typical, uh, as simple as it can, stepper motor. Uh, this is, um, yeah, it's called a 28BYJ48. Uh, you can buy them for 99 cents, I think, with controller and everything. Although for the shipping, you still have to pay three bucks. But anyway, so usually these things cost, you can you can buy them for like a five pack for for ten bucks or that, that kind of stuff. So you can find online, um, and a lot of uh, Arduino enthusiasts uh, use this. It doesn't run very fast, but it has a decent torque, and it, so it's suitable for for tracking uh, the kind of tracking that we do. It runs on five volts, so that's uh, it, it can be driven just by USB. Um, it's a four phase motor, I'm not a stepper motor expert, but a, a phase relates to the number of uh, coil groups, I believe that's in the stepper motor. And uh, if you've got like, it's four phase and, and you need to ground and you've got five wires. It uh, takes about 500 milliwatts. And the way it works is you can hook it up to your Arduino, you, just the driver board, you hook that up to the Arduino. And uh, <clears throat> the voltage can also be hooked straight up from the from the Arduino, and you can plug the Arduino into your computer and start playing around. So you don't need external power, although ask, you can use external let power. Let me ask a question. Mm -hmm. Arduino is a, a a company that makes electronic components for different purposes and in in kit form, correct? Yeah, it's it's actually an uh, I believe it's a hardware design, but it's also yeah a GUI that comes with it and their language. So it's uh, meant to uh, run on um, Atmel processors, I believe, 8-bit processors. That was the original uh, target, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, could also be other yeah. bits, but, but, but you, okay, so it, it, does not run, it does not run on an operating system. So uh, the Arduino is like a C-like language 
and there's a they made everything as simple as possible. Uh, they hid the bootloader and everything. So you bring it up on your PC, you've got an idea, you, you, you've got a very simple program. It's, it has a setup section and a loop section. So in the setup, you initialize your stuff, and then it just calls whatever is in the loop, and you the download it. Itself, the, target so run. the Arduino is not one circuit. It's You show an, a little circuit board there, but there's a wide okay. range of different circuits that you can have. This, this is just about the motor. So I'll, yeah. I'll get to the Arduino later. So let's just... Okay, uh, oh, okay, go. okay got it. Anyway, so... Yeah, so, so this little motor is 500 milliwatts. It's got uh, 64 internal steps, which is about five point something degrees. And it also has internal gearing, which is good because so that means you, like for instance, if you want to build a simple barn door, you just plug it straight into a screw, into a T-nut or something like that, and, you, and you're, you're done. <laughs> That's all you need to do, really. Um, so um, here are some more serious stepper motors that, you, uh, that have a lot more power. And that you can also use for GoTo, because the one that I just showed is, is not fast enough for GoTo. You'd be waiting forever. But it's fast enough for tracking and for auto-guiding and so on. Um, so uh, typically, they're uh, NEMA 17 uh, stepper motors. That's one of the most common kinds. Uh, for OnStep, this, that's the program that uh, I'll talk about later, but that's, that's the one that's running on my Los Mandy right now. Uh, you, uh, well, you can use any type of stepper motor, but what they recommend is to have at least 200 steps, which means like 0. no, 1.8 degree per step. But it's better to get take a 400 to get a 400 step motor. So that's a 0. 0.9. That's a full step, 0. 0.9 degrees. And then uh, you have to micro step, which means that that it's it's a factor of 16 times less, or 32, or whatever you choose. Uh, they say that. Low voltage and high power is preferred, just so these motors come in different voltages. You can get them for 24 volts or whatever, but they they recommend just low voltage. Uh, I run it on off of 12 volt. The 12 volt is useful because I can use it on the Arduino and also on the motor itself. Uh, so I don't need uh, separate uh, levels of power of, of voltage. Um, so these stepper motors have a, a micro step mode and uh, that's good for tracking, but it's not very good if for slewing. It's just too slow, or the computer has to work too hard to do that. So, so it can switch modes, and um, uh, it's done through SPI. SPI is a serial protocol on the computer. It means that these vertical pins here, these these four, um, you have to connect those with some jumper cables to to uh, to the right. You know, you have to connect it to the board, and then it can be controlled, and it can switch between. Uh, tracking mode, so micro step mode and just uh, full step mode. So then it can go much faster. Those get connected to the the board in the first uh, in the first slide. No, 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 no. That 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 is just a separate thing. It's just an example of a. Um, well, in a way, it is. I mean, this is this. Well, this what you see here. This little thing here um, is um, that's the driver board. That's comparable to the other one that we were just looking at. Um, this board here, the ULN, that guy over there. That, that controls okay. those phases, okay. the, mul the multi-phase, you know, it switches the voltage around, that sort of thing. Exactly. Okay. So, so, so yeah, so this one produces, so it, it takes the voltage, like the, you can connect it to the, your power supply directly, okay? So that comes, that's what, it's, it's done through pins on a board, of course, but it's basically connected to your power supply directly. So it has the 12 volts and, um, it also gets the digital control signals from the computer, so uh, you need boards like this because the you can't con you can't let the computer itself control it because it doesn't have enough power and its digital pins to to control the whole thing. You need extra power, so that's what that board is for. In both cases, and then there's the there are the servos. Um, this is a, a Los Mandy motor. It looks quite different, um, but. Um, this is a, you know, it's not a stepper motor, but it, ha it works with encoders. Uh, and I guess the nice thing about these kinds of motors is that they have the encoders internally. So um, an encoder is just a device that, that lets you count how many steps it has done. Uh, basically, it's not a stepper motor, but it, you know, it's just a, a pattern that, that will let the uh, controller know how many steps it has taken, basically. Uh, so it, it knows where it's at. So it's a closed loop system, actually. Um, and if it misses a step, like if a stepper motor misses a step, you've missed it. It's an open loop control and it will never come back. So you've got a deviation uh, 
And usually that does not happen, especially when you're tracking. When you slew, you might lose some steps because it, it needs more power and so on. But it's not critical because when you slew, you know, if you if you're a few arc seconds off, it's not not that bad. Uh, when you're tracking, you don't want to have that happen. But you know, um, it usually doesn't happen because tracking is not. It doesn't need a whole lot of power. Hank, are the are the Subaru motors considered to be smoother than stepper motors, or is that the opposite? Yes. Uh, yeah, you, you are correct that stepper motors are not particularly smooth because they step, right? <laughs> uh, so you have to really go to micro-stepping mode. And in a micro-step mode, it's not like um, just one coil that's on and on and off and does one rigid step, but there's a whole bunch of coils that, that get a sinoid, sinusoidal voltage that smooths everything out. So oh. by doing this micro stepping, you can actually make it very smooth, almost as smooth as a servo. Yeah. Oh, okay. And I'm not an expert in the hardware, but it, you know, for me, a, a stepper motor is just something you 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 give it a direction and a step, and it moves one step. <laughs> That's what it comes down to. All these details are taken. And most of it is taken care of by by this controller. So this whole sinusoidal voltage and so on for micro stepping, that's all in there. You don't have to put that in your code. So here are some Arduinos. So this is what you hook these things up to, basically. So uh, that, that first little uh, guy, little motor, would go straight into these pins. Uh, Arduino, so the Arduino design, it has a bunch of um, a, a pin layout that's uh, uniform across all the Arduinos. So this is the Arduino Uno, and it, there are several clones, but they all have the same, um, same uh, pattern of, of pins. There are digital inputs and outputs, uh, all this kind of stuff, and ground and voltage and PWM, um, useful stuff. And there are also shields that you can put on it because it's all standardized. They have made these shields that can, for instance, they, you can put USB connection in it. Or, well, this one has USB already, but uh, you can put Wi-Fi on it or um, you can put a uh, stepper board on it. And that's what I have done, actually. Um, the the Arduino that you see here uh, is actually not the original Arduino. This is an Arduino on steroids, which has uh, like four megabytes of uh, memory. Uh, well, the original Arduino only has like, I think, 256K of memory, <laughs> very little. Uh, these little computers are very good at uh, real-time stuff, but they are not big. They cannot run big programs. So you want to just run simple code on that stuff. Uh, it's very easy to use. Uh, I'll show you the Arduino go in sort of so you have an idea of what it takes to to uh, program something in there. Um, uh, below that, we've got the Raspberry Pi and the BeagleBone. That's another uh, very useful type of computer. Um, but that's really, I mean, these these those are not toys. It's the equivalent of a of a desktop system. It's just not Windows. It's Linux, uh, but it's basically equally powerful if it, you know, well, the hardware here is of course less powerful, but complexity wise, it's the equivalent of, of Windows. Linux is um, usually easier for, for real-time stuff for embedded control and so on. Um, it's not as, uh, you know, uh, Windows tries, likes to control all the stuff and once in a while they redo everything and it gets shoved down your throat. Linux is not like that. Linux is very open. Uh, it builds on a foundation, and it's much easier to to work with uh, if you're a do-it-yourselfer. So, um, I wanted to control, for instance, my AVX with uh, with a Raspberry Pi. I wanted to, my main goal was to do the uh, auto guiding. I did not want to want to have my laptop sitting out Windows laptop sitting outside because somebody could just come on my driveway and steal it. Um, but a, a Raspberry Pi costs just twenty bucks or something, and and so. You can run an auto guider on it just easily, and uh, that was very useful for it. So it's got four USB ports. It's got uh, an Ethernet port here, um, and you can remote log into it from your living room um, because it's got a yeah. A, it doesn't have Wi-Fi this one, but you can put a dongle in it, and and that's good enough to connect to it. Uh, in the field, I would use an Ethernet cable because it still has to go through the router, and that would be my router at home. But anyway, so. These are two two simple computers that can work together. And what I did for the uh, Los Mandy now is I've got a, um, a Raspberry Pi for the high level control. It's not just doing auto guiding anymore, but it runs ECOS and it controls this guy here 
that has the stepper motors on it on the shield on top of it. Uh, so that works really well together. So this one does, you know, plate solving and it has planetarium uh, control and all the kind of stuff. It's it's really. Does your little spandy mount have stepper motors on it? Uh, now it does. Yes. <laughs> Did you add those as a customization? So um, my lost Mandy, uh, because I was not ready to pay $900 extra for a control system, I thought it was ridiculous. I got it with the um, low level uh, Celestron controller originally. Uh, I was mostly interested in having a, a, a mount that is mechanically good. And I thought, you know, if I have to program something to, to make it do a go to and slewing, I can do that myself because, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm familiar with that stuff. And Which lost Mandy mount did you have? The G11S, but it's basically a G11, but the S, I don't know what it means, simple or something. It's the one without the Gemini system. It comes with a Celestron system, um, and that Celestron system is good enough for, for tracking and uh, auto guiding. Okay. It may do PEC control as well, as they, I think, um, and it's got ST4, so it should work fine. And I started out by just using the uh, setting circles because it being a Los Mandy, it has fantastic setting circles and it works. But you still, it's still difficult because before you can find a target, you first have to do the polar alignment very accurately. And then uh, you have to calibrate the mount by pointing it at a star and you just hope that your cone area is very small and so on and that everything, that your uh, telescope axis, your optical axis is parallel to the mechanical axis and then everything should work. But it's never perfect and you're usually off by half a degree and sometimes a degree and then it could be outside the field of view and if you can't see your target because you're doing astrophotography of faint targets it's really a pain in the neck yeah. so i realized eventually i have to you know get a go-to system and so i started looking at on step that i will talk about later but first the simple stuff um so this is the one of the simplest things that i've built which is you know kind of cool it, it's it has that motor that we were looking at earlier uh, over there, you can see that little uh, board that, that we were looking at, and there's the motor. Um, it's all pretty rough. <laughs> I've, I've just uh, nailed the Arduino onto this board here, <clears throat> and um, I've hooked it up through a USB cable to my, my computer. What type of coupler did you go from the uh, the bolt to the stepper motor? Was that a, uh, did you machine something for that? From, from okay. From, that, that, that connects from the them. It connects your stepper motor to the bolt underneath. Oh, that. Oh, yeah. So uh, that is just a blob of epoxy. So oh, that, okay. that, that thing that you see here is just a, a threaded rod that I cut a piece off of. And you can get at uh, Archer Supply or whatever it's called now. Um, you know, this, this epoxy, it, it's like a roll that you can just uh, cut a piece off of and knead it. You just shape it around there. You just stick the uh, the flat part of the stepper motor onto it, and you're done, basically. So it's, it's direct coupling between the bolt and the motor. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And that's a nice thing. It it has this internal gear, so you don't have to worry about gears. So this is probably as simple as it as it gets mechanically. Um, well, ma Malibu uh, epoxy. I've never heard of that. Like a, a kind of, it'd be kind of like a. Uh, it's a putty. A putty. Oh, yeah. damn. Yeah, sorry, e epoxy putty. That's what I meant to say. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's amazing. Yeah, it's pretty cool stuff. It comes in a roll and uh, roll and uh, there's plastic around it so it doesn't dry out. Um, and uh, you can put it back in the container and you can use it for a long time. And yeah, because um, I, I, it seemed like the simplest way for me to do to get this done, and it works. You know, it's well enough. Now this is a. a this whole um, side thing, they, they sell these little uh, joiners too that you can yeah. use to put two rods oh, together. Yeah. So, yeah. Yes. I, I use some of these flex nuts from, from the flexible versions that uh, to on my uh, Los Mandy right now to connect the stepper motors to the Los Mandy. Yeah. Those are good. But this is just very simple and it's good enough. Um, so you can compensate for, for this fact that you're using a straight screw and not a thread, not a, not a curved screw. Uh, so there's a, in order to get a constant rotation speed, you need to do some ma math and, and there's a simple function that will tell you how fast you have to run the motor uh, and how that's all is done in detail. I can talk about it later, but this thing actually works. It looks pretty crude. Um, so what you do is you aim the, the hinge. This is a piece of piano hinge uh, at 
Polaris, and then you know you you stick a uh, camera on top of it. This is not the camera that I would actually use. This is a super zoom, but you'd use a DSLR. I, I would use my Fuji or something like that. And this works fairly well for, for up to 100 or 200 millimeters. It can do it. It's, it, it really, really does work. So um, here are some other examples. So to the bottom left here, this is the, the classical uh, construction. So here, this is one with a threaded rod. So you can run the motor at a constant speed, uh, which is easy. You don't need a computer, uh, but you do have to deal with a threaded rod and you have to build a gear. And so that's a lot more work. So mechanically, this is more complicated, I think. And How the hell did you bend that rod? Well, yeah, that's a good question that, uh, you know, that, that, that is, I've never done that myself. Actually, I have done it. Uh, yeah, I've done it. I have bent a threaded rod myself. It's, it's not trivial. When I did it, I noticed that some, some parts got bent more than other parts and it's just not ideal. <laughs> so I yeah, don't know how yeah. to do it accurately. Now this is a fairly thin rod. It might be easier. Mine was uh, thicker actually. I use it in my equatorial platform of which I also have a picture uh, later on. So the one in the middle is a is an uh, Astro track. I don't know if you've heard of that. It's a pretty fancy uh, tracker for cameras. They sell, I think the whole, this whole thing, this setup will probably cost almost a thousand dollars or something like that. It's pretty expensive, but it's basically a barn door tracker. So <clears throat> the, 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 the planes here are sort of perpendicular to what you would see uh, here. So this hinge is comparable with this axis here. Uh, so yeah, it's just aimed at the other direction. Oh, okay. But what you see here, these, this, this, this uh, um, uh, beam here, it's actually two beams on top of each other. And this is the motor with electronics. This just sl sl slowly slides off to the right and then you'll see those beams separate and, and so on. And uh, it's, it's really a barn door type of idea. But these things work really well. You can take really good pictures with it, but it's very expensive. And you know, this little thing here, it just costs a, a few bucks to make. <laughs> uh, if, you can, if you know how to program and so on. So that, that's just something simple that uh, I started out with later on. I like that idea of a barn door and I, I designed a barn door uh, for my Dobsonian. This was a bit of a crazy idea that nobody else would do, but I, yeah, I had this 10 inch Dobsonian and I wanted to take pictures with it. So um, there are, you know, the, the standard way of doing this kind of stuff is to buy an equatorial platform, which I've also built and that's the next slide. Um, but um, um, this is another option that I think um, well, it was my my own invention, but um, I think there has been a, a precursor. There was one guy who also built a, a box like this, and instead of stepper motors, he put a balloon in between, and he brought it to a, a astro uh, conference. And so, by deflating the balloon, you could <laughs> he could track the stars. Um, it was called a hiss drive. Oh yeah, yeah, the hiss drive. That's right. Yeah. No I'm kidding. <laughs> I discovered that later on, and I have what a feeling that if it went into a pop mode. That's, that's going to bounce up and down, so uh, I think this is probably better. So it, the way it works is you've got these two beams here. They go connect to the other side of the box, and the hinge is on the other side of the box. And uh, this here is the stepper motor. It's that same little stepper motor. Um, in this case, that little guy moves a, a Dobsonian of 65 pounds, and it can only do that because everything is very carefully balanced. You see a super bungee here that's wrapped around and so on, blah, blah. It's like <laughs> a crazy oh, car. Yeah. Anyway, this controller here, you can actually it's, it, take it off. So uh, it, it has the same blob of epoxy. So, so this motor, uh, the, the top of that screw down there has the blob of epoxy, but you can lift this thing off. So by its own gravity, it just uh, it's got the batteries on it. And so it's heavy enough. It pushes itself down and it, it, it turns the turns the motor. And there's also a declination motor that's uh, on that side over there. You can't really see it, but it's something similar. And um, the way the declination is done, see this, this little piece of metal sticking out? That's like a, um, that's the declination axis. It's all pretty crude, but it actually works. So I had an auto-guided um, system here. So the Arduino is down there. Uh, I've got one for, uh, for RA, sorry, oops. Uh, one for RA and one for declination. 
two Arduinos and uh, they connect to this auto guider. So there's a cable here that comes out, goes to the Arduino. Um, it's, uh, yeah, so the, the, the auto guider pr produces an uh, on off signal. It's, uh, that's SD4. Um, and if it's on, then it says, okay, go faster. If it's, it's off, then it says, uh, well, okay, on, no, it has, um, it also has a direction. So if it's on, then you have to either go faster or slower or you do nothing. And likewise for declination. Um, so, yeah, and the other side of the, the other cable that comes out of the auto guide, it goes into the computer. The computer sits over there and you can run PHD2 and do it. Anyway, so, um, oh yeah, over there, here to the left, you can see the, the controller in detail. That's the Arduino and the, that's a little board and so on. And there's the blob of epoxy at the bottom. <laughs> um, anyway, it was fun to do. So this Boy, picture was- That'll keep you on your toes. <laughs> it was a balancing act. Yeah. So I, I took a few pictures with it. This is one. This is one of them. They're not not really good. These are just my first pictures. No, okay. Those, so, those are very good. Don't don't denigrate. Right. Yeah. Amazing. <laughs> but it works. I also have uh, the pinwheel galaxy and the horse head and so on. I've got. I think I tried it five times or so, and then okay, it worked. Uh -huh. <laughs> and then. <laughs> And then I, I uh, moved on to that other equatorial platform that's, I wanted to build something like this. Yeah, at some point, you know, on a Sunday morning one time, I noticed that uh, Hay Needle had a 12-inch Dubsonian for 630 bucks, and I didn't need it, but I thought, no, this is so dirt cheap, I've got to get it. <laughs> so I got this Z12, and eventually I wanted to uh, motorize that as well. But then I wanted to try it with a regular uh, equatorial platform. So this is my equatorial platform. It's got uh, two of these sections here. Um, and they are shaped in such a way that uh, it corresponds with, you know, you, you put it. Okay, so, so the left part is put on the rollers here. And then, uh, you know, you can put the up so on it. And, and this thing uh, rolls in the direction around an axis directed at Polaris. So first you have to aim your equatorial platform at Polaris, of course. For that, I've got a plank and, and I use this line here and so on and can roughly do it. It works quite well for just visual. Um, I also wanted to make it um, auto-guided and it's set up for that. Uh, so I've got two Arduinos here. Um, and here's the threaded rod. I was telling you about the threaded rod. This is the curved threaded rod and this is my <laughs> other threaded rod. So, oops, let me just go back. Um, there's the motor and this, this curved rod presses against this other curved rod and then that that that's how it you know moves the the platform oh. i did it because, because then you can just if you want to reset it you can just pull this one threaded rod to the side and just move the whole platform back so that was the only way in which i uh, how long you know, can you run it before you have to reset it it's about an hour and 15 minutes i think oh. So yeah, that's long enough for, for astrophotography. Although every time you reset it, you have to you know aim the scope again, you have to blah, blah, blah. Yeah. So you lose like 15 minutes just like that. So in practice, it's gonna be almost an hour or so that you can get out of it. Hank, again, the curved rods. I don't think here that those curved rods have to be corresponding, just the, just the apex where they meet. That's, that's, they don't have to have the same curvature. It's just the right. This only this one has the curvature. The other one is straight, and it's just where they meet. That's oh, actually oh, okay. where they contact. Okay. But it is the weak point because um, there's friction uh, and and there's not enough contact. So because of the friction and because of the flexibility, this rod tends to go up. It, it flops up and down basically, and it okay. also flops back. So if you don't have it pressed tightly against the other one you'll see difference in speed. And that's very bad for astrophotography. So that, that was actually the hard part. And if I'd have to do it again, uh, I'd pick something else. Uh, how, did, how did you size the, uh, the platform for the, uh, the, the, the telescope? Um, how I sized, uh, um, you mean the, the size of the-, the, the Yeah, uh, with, with, with the telescope so that it, um, it uh, was balanced enough. Uh... Okay, so so I started out by writing a program in Scilab. Scilab is like the free version of MATLAB. And uh, you're right that uh, one of the main goals is that you have the center of gravity uh, 
right, sitting right on the axis, that the, the virtual axis that this thing rotates around. And so I first had to figure that out and that basically determines the shape of, of these two sectors here. So that requires uh, some math. And I, yeah, I, I've got a program that, that uh, produces basically all these, these, all the things that you see there. So. Wow, wow. Yeah. Hank, um, again, getting back to those rods, those threaded rods, I'm assuming these are quarter 20 threads. And they and are quarter inch, I, I believe, yeah, quarter inch, yeah. 20, and 20, 20 threads, 20, 20 threads, threads per inch. Yeah. Could you, uh, could you get a finer thread to smooth out this, this, uh, this gliding that was bouncing up and down? Yeah, maybe, maybe um, I, I, I'm not sure. Um, you know, I've, I've seen other people who actually had a, th a curved rod and created a negative of it using epoxy. And okay. That seemed to work very well. So I'm not the, the first one who invents this. The, the other people have been looking at this as well. Okay. okay. It's just that the, the, the problem is that you've got these two round, you know, rods that, that, that touch it some fair some point that is too small it would be much better if one were the negative of the other it would make yeah. a huge difference yeah and then it would also stay in place better so maybe if i'd have to try this again i i might actually give that a shot yeah it, i understand I think it's doable yeah so yeah that's just the mechanical size of things and 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 yeah i made the rollers here i've got f four support points uh it, and it, it's useful because it, it's a heavy dub. So if it doesn't quite fit, because you know, for if you have more than three, then one is going to be off a little bit uh, because of the, with the weight it, it just presses itself in there. But it's it's more than what I need. I would like to, if I do this again, I would make this from wood, not from metal. This was like kind of difficult to bend. Even the bending pattern, I did the math for that, and uh, my Scilab program produced that as well. It's a uh, <laughs> Obviously, I like math, uh, so yeah, I do. <laughs> it's no, I, I'm 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 very impressed. And the uh, the uh, uh, you, could you uh, again here just getting back in the mechanics of this board? I know what you're talking about. The four points uh, mm -hmm. in a very simple way. When I have a ba uh, when I bring out a daub base that I have, it has four feet, and it really takes a long time to get it to to balance versus three feet. But you could maybe spring load one of those feet to to self you know to self uh, uh, balance. Yeah, it, it, it's not necessary in this case because the dob is like sixty plus pounds and it really you know presses it. In. And I, I have placed everything accurately enough that the difference is actually very small, so it doesn't okay. take much to uh, flatten it. Out. So it actually works quite well. Okay. So anyway, I've, I've used it for visual, and it it's you 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 point it and it stays dead on the target. So that, that's that's nice. Just just without auto guiding and so on. Just uh, use the RA motor. Anyway, that's uh, another useful thing. So um, I use the same code for the uh, uh, camera barn door as for this one, and as for the um, um, the uh, barn door for my daub. It's all the same stuff. Uh, this here is a different beast. I, I've shown this last time in the meeting. So um, for uh, those who were not there, this is uh, an on-step controller. So <clears throat> at the bottom here, you see the, the Wemos that was the first uh, Arduino controller from a, a while back. If I would go, let's see, how can we go, go to slide? Um, yeah, this maybe. Um, next. Yeah, so this guy here, the one at the top, that's the Wemos uh, D1R32. It's a 32-bit processor. It, it runs free RTOS, actually. So Arduino runs on free RTOS, which is a bit special because normally Arduino just runs on bare metal. But there's actually an, an operating system under it. It's a, it's a dual-core processor. So actually, <laughs> the thing that I'm working on now is it has uh, Wi-Fi built in, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth built in. That's also not normal for Arduinos, but I um, I am using the Bluetooth. OnStep has the Bluetooth support, uh, but for Wi-Fi, they want you to put in a separate board, and this thing has Wi-Fi on board, so I'm trying to get both to work. Right now, the memory seems to be the problem because I can't get the code. Wi-Fi requires a lot of code, and uh, I'm almost there, I think, but <laughs> whatever. Anyway, so this is a little Wemos board that's... Uh, uh, go to slide. Let's see here. 
Mm. Uh, yeah, there. Okay, so that's the Wemos down there. The board on top, that's the that's a CNC V3 board. So OnStep gives you a choice of a number of boards that you can work with. And this is one of the simplest custom off-the-shelf boards that you can get. It's from the 3D printer world. So there's a lot of 3D printer projects and people build their own 3D printers and they need lots of stepper motors and controllers. So these boards are available. It's not just for astronomy, not at all. They wouldn't make them for astronomy, but uh, yeah, this uh, is very useful to have. So uh, we can leverage that. Uh, to the left here is the Raspberry Pi. You can see two USB ports here. The other ones are also used. Um, one is for the Wi-Fi. The other one is for to connect to the OnStep. So these, this cable, this blue cable connects the OnStep with the, with the Raspberry Pi that runs ECOS and lets me do all the high level stuff. Um, I use um, RJ45 cables, just uh, Ethernet Cat5 cables to, to connect the motors uh, to the, or to, to connect the board, the CNC board to the motors. And that's basically it. Um, uh, again, it's kind of rough. I kind of think it's uh, funky to show all the wires and so on. Uh, anyway, it's, it's low cost. The, the Wemos cost like three bucks or something like that. Then the CNC board, like another, I don't know, 10 bucks. It came with a bunch of uh, stepper drivers, four stepper drivers. So it's all pretty cheap. I bought two of everything and then duplicates of different kinds because I thought, okay, this stuff is going to break and I'm going to solder it and then it's not... I'm, I'm going to destroy it probably, so I, I need some extra spare parts. So I've got a whole bunch of stuff. I need. I've got a soldering station and so on. So uh, did you I get this from a place called Banggood? No, no. Okay. Uh, sounds familiar, but I'm not quite sure. Yeah. Because I don't. I, I don't like Banggood. Those those people, Mike. I told you they were they were just terrible to work with. Mm. I think it's Singapore or Shanghai or. I I don't know, but I got a. I got a bunch of uh, stuff from them that they were kind of uh, late on the shipment. I think that was just because of certain issues, let's say, between countries in the beginning. It's, of the it's because and of the so, COVID. Yeah. Um, so I, I got these two-phase stepper motor drivers for like two and a half bucks a piece. Wow. And, and a nano for about 250 a piece, too. So... Um, it doesn't have to be very expensive. Uh, I, when I heard that you got your uh, your uh, we we must board for three dollars, that's a that's a steal, you know. Yeah, it is. It is. It really is. And uh, yeah, you so, so you can you can buy them sometimes from from uh, U.S. dealers, and you'll pay more. But right now, the thing is, everything goes slow. So if you buy stuff from China, uh, you might be waiting a month or more than you'd like to. <laughs> so, oh yeah. It's worth paying the extra money for, and mm -hmm. I got my stuff reasonably on time. Um, and it, but you have to watch out where you get it from. The link on the OnStep page is the best because I did not use that one. And this board, it had all these 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 pins. They were just out of line. I had to bend them straight and whatnot. It was just uh, not the best build, but yeah. it was cheap. So yeah, uh, eventually for, I got it working. But I was I, afraid I, that. It, I have a question, Hank. For somebody that doesn't know how to write code, uh, I, it sounds like the, that the Arduino board would be the easiest way to go in a very simple way. Absolutely, mount. yeah. Yeah, so Arduino is always good because there are so many hobbyists and they're all in the same position. Nobody knows how to write code. So, so they have a whole ecosystem with simple examples that will get you going. And it's really easy to use. Um, OnStep itself is much more complex. It's actually so complex that it barely, you know, the Arduino interface is, is it, it has outgrown that whole thing in my opinion, but they still have it that way. Uh, but they have packaged it in such a way that everybody can put it together. So all you have to do is just flash it with whatever they give you. So they've got ready-made pin maps and for your hardware configuration and, and whatever you need and uh, driver code. And so you, all you have to do is configure it. It's just one file where you just set, okay, on, off, or whatever, speed of the motor. Okay. That's that's what you do, and then you flash it, and that's then it runs, typically. <clears throat> now, you had a CNC board that you said you, were, you went to the uh, 3D printer world, and, and there's, a lot of three, uh, there's a lot of 3D printing that has stuff that we can use, I think. Yes, yes. 
yeah, this is all leveraged off of the 3D printing world. Otherwise, it, yeah. Uh, I, I have to say, on step, they those guys also, they create their own boards. Uh, so they have a repository online where you can just download the design and send it to the PCB manufacturer and they will build it for you and they'll send it to you in the mail. Wow. I haven't, I haven't done that. To me, that was more too complex because if you do, if you go that way, then you also buy into that design. And one of those things was a separate board for the Wi-Fi and so on. And, and part of the reason is probably that um, uh, the Arduino is just a single core computer. That's just one thread of control. And that thread is, is used primarily for driving the motors and everything else should not interfere too much. So Wi-Fi is a big thing. So you, they put that on a separate board just for that reason, I think. <clears throat> on the WeMOS, ideally, since it's a two core, a dual core system, you should be able to run it without interfering with the rest. And I'm trying to get that done, although it's not really necessary. I have Bluetooth and, and Bluetooth works fine. Okay, so let's go on. Um, yeah, so for the Arduino, we've talked about that a little bit. It's It basically has no OS, right? So it's got a setup uh, function and a loop function. We'll take a look at an example just later on so you get an idea of what kind of code you need for that and, and the complexity of it. For um, the design that I made, it's all barn door stuff, basically. So you've got a nominal uh, RA speed, and uh, that's determined by the arm length and the threads per inch of the screw that you use. And, you have to watch out for error accumulation. So you, if you step, there, there are two ways of doing it. You can uh, say, okay, I'm going to uh, delay. Uh, I, I'm going to take a step and then I wait for a while, do nothing. And then I'm going to take a step again. And all you have to do is determine what, how much you want to delay it. But of course, if you have small errors in the delay that will accumulate over time. So you need to take step against the timeline. So you can do, you, you can use the delay function and uh, check the clock every time and step against the clock basically. Uh, so you say, okay, what time is it? Okay, how long did, <laughs> do I have to delay and, and go on and, until you, you're there? And that works very well. The other way is to uh, use interrupts. So you program the Arduino to give interrupts at the regular interval. And that, that's also basically stepping against, because it, it's a timer <coughs> interrupt. So that, that's also timeline based. And that's the more professional way of doing it. I use delays and it works. Um, in first instance, I used the Arduino library for my stepper motor, and it was not a success. Uh, it just didn't have enough power. And um, then I found somebody else online who uh, programmed the thing straight from the manufacturer instructions, and I did that, and it was it provided a lot more power. It was much stronger that way. And I don't know what the difference is, but the generic Arduino library was not good enough. So it's recommended to just check the data sheet, and it, it tells you how you step. Um, for auto guiding, yeah, well, if you if you hook up things like an auto guider, always beware of ground loops. I've never had any problems, but it's just something you have to watch out. You have because your Arduino might be hooked up to a uh, battery, or um, so you've got an AVX, right? It's hooked up to your computer, and you also have this Arduino hooked up to your, to your computer, and the auto guider, and so on. Um, I've never had any problems, luckily, but it's, it's uh, you know, you, you can have ground loops and you can have bad things happening if it's not all. What if you hook up everything to a battery, the computer, the telescope, and the processor? Well, yeah, the trouble with uh, hooking up a, a laptop to a battery is that it will drain the battery pretty quick. Oh. First of all, it will start charging the battery of the laptop from the battery. <laughs> so that will cost you a lot of power. It's not ideal. No, I, I wouldn't do that. Um, but I'm you know, sorry to be a... I'm sorry to be a pain here, but what's a ground loop? Well, you you have you have, you have to have a, a common ground, and you're hooking up uh, from these devices. You you have other USB cables that also hook into that ground, but they also feed back into some other pins on your computer. And you may, you want to make sure that there are no bad things happening there. I, okay, which I know. It's I, because your ground is not uniquely defined. Each ground has there's a voltage difference between several different grounds. Th th that so, might be, yes. Yeah. yeah. I, I, a lot of stuff that I do is all um, temporary setup. It's not connected to anything. So batteries are only the only option. Yeah. So I have, I have three batteries, one for the computer, one for the telescope, and one for the... Right, right. Yeah. I, I'm, not, I'm not, I don't have an electronics background, okay. so I, I'm not an expert in this, but 
I do know that this can be a problem and uh, yeah, yeah, it can. Yeah. Keep coming. So, so the nice thing about the SSAG, SSAG is the auto guider that I use, is that it actually uh, accounts for that a little bit because it uses an optocoupler. So it has circuits that are electronically separated and uh, yeah, it, um, it returns a, through the optocoupler, it uh, returns a signal that's on or off. So there's a little light in there that goes on and activates the sensitive, uh, whatever. It trans translates it to a, an, an electric signal that you can pick up on your Arduino. You uh, add a little resistor to it, measure the voltage drop over it, and feed it to the analog input of the Arduino. And it, you have to figure out what is the light, right limit and so on. And, but it's easy enough to figure out. Uh, so when it's on, you see a certain voltage. When it's off, you see some, uh, something else. And then you put an if then else statement. Uh, if it's on, then you have to do something. And if it's off, then you don't. So that works quite well. It's very simple. Uh, that's kind of fun. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. Arduino is really fun to use. So, okay, here's the uh, auto guider just to, to make clear how this stuff works. So S SSAG, <clears throat> I had a picture of that earlier on. It, there were two cables coming out of it. So basically the SSAG feeds uh, a stream of images to the desktop or Raspberry Pi or whatever it is. And you've got some auto guider program running there. It interprets the images and it makes sure that you can track your star. And then it sends, oops, it sends a control system back through this line, basically. And that's uh, so, so that, sorry, it sends a control signal back through this line. And that signal is passed on through the optocoupler uh, to, to the Arduino. So this is your on off signal. And the Arduino then knows to, okay, I have to speed up or I have to slow down. <clears throat> In my case, for the dual sided, uh, dual guided system, I would have two Arduinos. S24 has uh, five cables and uh, five pins and, and one of them is a ground or so. So it's got an on off signal for, uh, it tells you it's on or it's off and it also tells you direction. And this is um, the Arduino interface. Um, so it's it's got like a tools pull down. And if you see that, I actually have it up. Hold on a second. Well, I, I can show that later. We don't have to go into details, but this tools things um, will make it work for multiple types of uh, computers. So there's all kinds of Arduino systems, and um, there are vendors that provide you with plugins. So if you if if the standard Arduino doesn't have it, then you can go to their site um, and download it and plug it into this system, and it will show up there, and you can use it just as if it were their own. <clears throat> it's a very simple interface. Um, so here's a bit of the code, just, just to get an idea of what, what you need to program. And now I need to, whoops. Um, I've got something, okay, yeah, okay, I've got it, okay, yeah. All right, so at the top, there's just some comments. Everything with two slashes is a comment. So this, this is the general code that I would use for my Dobsonian barn door for RA and for DEC, so this numbers one and four, um, and for the, um, the two camera, I, I built two of these barn door boards for, for the cameras. So this is the, for the motor, this is what I got straight from the, from the sheet. So this is how you step the thing. So every um, row corresponds with one step. So it, uh, it, it, it is cyclic. So you have to, you know, so the, the first time you step, you use the first row. The second time you step is the second row. So this high low signal goes onto the pins that are defined here. So blue, pink, yellow, whatever. Those are the colors of the motors, uh, of the wires on the motor. Um, some global variables. This is a setup function. So first of all, you have to have some, some math, just pi and, and the threads per inch, inch to centimeters, number of seconds in sidereal day and so on, and the beam length and all this stuff that will uh, eventually result in, in, in a delay that you set for every step and that determines the speed. So that's a bit of math that you have to do. Once you've done that, then uh, <clears throat> we've got this loop thing. This gets called in a loop by, by the Arduino system. I choose to have the loop called just once because I, I've got all my logic inside this loop, so it never leaves that loop and it only gets called once. Um, so here's some, some logic about uh, what I said about the uh, auto guiding. So this is, um, Barn door is one or barn door is four. That means uh, the, the RA or the deck. And this is the uh, 
the pin for the uh, optocoupler signals from the uh, auto guider. So based on what, what it tells me, yeah. I know if it has to do something, if it has to go up or down or whatever. Um, this is something about the delay calculation. Um, there's also a speed correction in there somewhere. So this is this year is a speed correction for to compensate for the fact that we're working with a straight screw. And then you step the motor. So that's all it is. It's uh, so you, you cycle. This is it's got uh, it's a loop from J0 to 4 so that that, that steps through the columns of that um, matrix that we were looking at. So this is just one row of the matrix. So um, and this 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 CCW that's that's the matrix actually it is high or low and that's what you put on the motors on the pins. Uh, you update the timeline. Um, this uh, I guess I have a timeline in seconds and the time that I get is in microseconds, so I multiply it with a million. And this is yeah. I, I added some logic because the delay microseconds wasn't really accurate enough, so I do it in chunks of 1,000 microseconds, and it seems to work well. And here is something that tells us, okay, um, if it's declination, do you go up or do you go down? For RA, it's just a matter of going faster or slower, but here there's an actual direction. And that's all the code, so it's really simple. And uh, yeah, you just download it into the target and it, uh, it, it runs. Anyway, sorry about the detail here. Um, Let's see if we could go to the next one. Way slide. above my head. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's, it's a bit of a pain. It's, uh, yeah, I mean, of course, I had to think that through a little bit. It's not trivial. Um, yeah, you actually have to do the math and all that. But it's kind of fun when it works, you know. The, the program yeah. is, is So not, is that program written in C? Yeah. Basically, yeah. It's a C look like. It yeah. does look like C, yes. It's actually C++. Um, oh, okay. But what they've done for the uh, Arduinos is they, they hide all the header files from you, which is really nice uh, for simple programs. So you don't have to worry about the data types that, that your variables are. You declare it in one place and it's known throughout, basically. Yep. Um, but if your program becomes really complex, then these header files are actually useful to have because it can be used in, in, in a regular development environment you would like to know the editor to be aware of, of uh, variables and so on. So it, so it can do some context highlighting of things that are important or things that are, you know, irrelevant and, and uh -huh. that let you jump through the code and so on. And that's when you want to have those header files. I'll talk about that a little bit later, later, but it's, it's kind of technical. That's really programming stuff for nerds. I am a nerd. Um, so, We're all nerds. Yeah. Are you a programmer? I trade? Well, I, I, I do programming. I, I have it for a living, but you know, I, I, I really do math and uh, estimation, statistics, control mm -hmm. systems and, and stuff. And uh, <clears throat> spectral analysis. That's really what I do. Cool stuff. Um, anyway, so on to OnStep. OnStep is actually a professional equatorial mount uh, system. Um, that's just as good as any professional system that you get from Los Mandy or from uh, this guy, uh, what are these, yeah. any, any uh, Celestron or <clears throat> there are very fancy uh, brands that cost a lot of money. Um, but this is open source, so everybody can use it. It's the design, it's all open. Like I said, they, they create PCBs that you can just download and have it manufactured and uh, shipped to your home. and build it. So it's uh, all based on Arduino and their <clears throat> user interface is still Arduino, although it, you know, there are lots of files and it really gets crowded in that little interface that they have that, that programming interface. Um, so the kind of Arduinos that they use is a, are a Omega 2560. That's actually a very old one, uh, but it has a lot of pins and that's useful. <clears throat> and the, I already mentioned the Wemos. That's the one that I use. Then there's a Teensy. I also got a, a couple of Teensies. Teensies are really powerful. Um, they are multi-core, I think, and they are the fastest of all of them. So they're like 10 times faster than any other type of Arduino. Uh, uh, and, and they're really small. <laughs> uh, they can also be used with, uh, with OnStep. STM is a very cheap type of uh, 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 chip that, that's, that's also embedded chip that is, that's also used. This, it's very small and very cheap. 
sometimes it's too cheap. These guys, they, they found out that they had a certain chip that they could use for that. And it was advertised as 64 kilobytes, having 64 kilobyte flash. But they found out that it actually had 128 kilobytes flash. And so they started building a design on the assumption that it, these things had 128 kilobyte flash. So now it turns out there's a whole batch of these SDMs that only have 64 kilobytes and now they're screwed. So, but they found an, another chip, I think. So they, they, they found a solution for it. Um, so the PCB designs, yeah, from GitHub. GitHub, GitHub is just a you know a system that's owned by Microsoft now that uh, where you can store all your stuff and do some version control. <clears throat> uh, custom off-the-shelf stuff uh, builds based on 3D printer boards. Like I said, the CNC V3, that's the one that I use. The other one is Marks, uh, Marks 1.4 or Marks. Uh, if you go to the Onstat page, you'll you'll see those names and and you'll see examples. Maybe you can go to that page just to take a look uh, later on. Um, so it's for equatorial mounts, but also for Altas. So you can also use it for Dubsonians if you like, and even apply a D-rotator. I think they refer to it as, as a rotator. Uh, the, the, a rotator is, 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 is a device that rotates the camera so that the um, uh, field uh, rotation that you would normally get with an Altas mount um, uh, is counteracted. So it's eliminated. So the features that it has, uh, Pulse guiding, well, that's just the name that says, okay, just, just step a little faster, a little slower. It's done in pulses, actually, this, the speed increments. Um, SD4 is the old way of auto guiding. That's uh, what I used uh, with this, uh, the SSAG, with the optocoupler and so on. That's basically, it's not quite a digital signal. It's an electric signal that you can just measure and use um, for old fashioned auto guiding systems. Uh, Autofocusers, so uh, fo mo motorized focusers are also supported. Um, uh, periodic error control, so if your mount has periodic error, there's a system that will let you measure the periodic error and uh, fix it, counteract it. Meridian flips, uh, it's got a park and a home position. Weather compensation, so um, depending on the angle, the, it accounts for the uh, index of refraction based on that angle. And depending on the weather, I mean, there might be humidity or so, but they have, there is a, a sensor that you can add that actually measures the humidity and, and it's also accounted for in the control system. Um, mode switching for, you know, what I mentioned for switching from micro stepping to uh, full step. Uh, I believe it supports steppers and servos. There is one file, <clears throat> one header file in the repository that's called servo and they don't advertise it, but I suspect that there are some, some openings there. So um, by default, just assume that it's just doing steppers. Uh, a dew heater, it was mentioned. I haven't seen that. I think that's probably with version four. I don't see it in my repository. Mine is in version 3.16. Uh, supports Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, EEPROM. So you know, um, if you want to maintain your your location and so on, so you don't have to set it up every time. Mm -hmm. Over there, and it does N-star alignment, and the alignment also. They, they have a pretty interesting model that also accounts for cone error and for polar alignment uh, errors and that kind of stuff. So it's all pretty clever. Um, it supports ASCOM and Indy. Indy is, uh, yeah, for those who are not familiar with those protocols, uh, on <clears throat> if you do astrophotography, then ask them on Windows is usually the, 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 the thing that people use. So you install it on your desktop. The drivers actually, actually live on your desktop, which is a horrible design, um, but it works and uh, it sells. Um, it, I say it's horrible because <clears throat> really um, you would like to have a, you know, a, a co telescope control system be distributed so that you can run your client on one computer and have the servers be on some other computer, like for instance, a little micro uh, processor that lives on your mount <laughs> that does simple things that you can just control from, uh, from your computer. But instead what they've done is because it's COM based and it's, you know, DCOM is, is a dinosaur that, that Microsoft abandoned already in 2000 that it's, this ASCOM was invented later. <clears throat> It just doesn't let you do that. In so they, they used COM, which is, it's a client server system on your local computer. So they were forced to basically put the drivers on your computer. And then under the hood, it talks to, through regular conventional devices to, to, your, to your mount and your 
focuser and all this kind of stuff. This thing does an awful lot of stuff. Oh yeah, it yeah, it's it's not a toy. Yeah. Um, so the other option is indie support. Uh, indie is distributed, and it is also platform independent. So Ascom, by the way, because it's com, it only lives on Windows. So if you have a Linux system or a Mac, you you can't use it. But okay. Indie can run anywhere, and uh, the Raspberry Pi uh, and ECOS they also use uh, Indie. So let me, ask, let me ask you a question. Mm -hmm. um, when you you go to a, a star field and you you're taking a picture of it and you want to take several subframes, but you want to dither between the subframes. How do you do that? Is that in there? Um, yeah, so dithering is usually done, uh, I think, through the auto guiding program that you select. Yes, well, PhD2 couples with the other program in a um, dither mode. Yes. And then it has a pattern that it follows. Okay. So that wouldn't be in this in this coding that you're doing. Um, no, the dithering is typically not part. I, I, if you have like a Celestron controller, I don't think it has dithering built in. It okay. is typically done through from the higher level. So that would be done either through ECOS or through PhD two. Okay. I think. Yeah. That's what that that's what it is. Uh, that's how they do it with the SciTech. Okay. Yeah. And I, I am using ECOS not with PhD2, but it, with its native uh, auto guider. I haven't, I can't recall if they have a dither button, but uh, I suspect it's in there. If I need it, I could plug in PhD2. So ECOS actually can work with PhD2, with LinGuider, and with the native one. So if I need dithering, I can always get PhD2 in there if I need to. Now, Backyard EOS also does dithering through the PhD guiding. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. I think that's generally how it's done, yeah. All right, they also provide a smart hand controller with hardware, so that's a separate project, um, and an Android client application with a star catalog. So I have um, the, their client application running on my cell phone, so I use that as the controller to do alignment and uh, set it up and move it, slew it around and so on, which is kind of cool. It will not work on I iPhone? The, yes, there is somebody who actually wrote a client on, a, on iPhone. Um, I just haven't tried it. The okay. main developer has an Android client, uh, Android, and he uses that. So I don't know what the stat of, status of, uh, status of uh, maintenance is of the other one. Should, should be okay, I think. Um, and you can also control it through ECOS, by the way. So. Um, ECOS is, is like um, run from a basically desktop environment. So the way I run that is I've got my and, uh, t Galaxy tab and I use VNC to remote log into my Pi. And then I bring up KSTARS and ECOS. KSTARS is a planetarium uh, program and ECOS is just a, a sub menu from it that has all the control stuff. <clears throat> and it co also brings up a virtual um, controller. So I can also use it use that, that virtual controller, it just pops up, it looks like a hand controller, and just use that to press the buttons. But of course, it's it's not really convenient. I mean, you have to use the mouse, and if you have a remote desktop, then the mouse is not in a place where your thumb is, for instance, and it works, but it's, uh, it's nice to have a cell phone and be able to use it directly without uh, these. Uh, uh, just for everybody's information, I just got a text, the Dodgers won the World Series. So, <laughs> Back, back to the so. Back, <laughs> All right. Let's, back well, to you, Hank. <laughs> yeah, but glad let me know that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the last one is um, the 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 group uh, that that's their uh, website. So I recommend just check it out and check their wiki. It has all the designs and so on. And we we can actually go there. That and would be the, that would be the place for to look at that OnStar. I yeah. Mean, for the yeah. one on the one step. Right. Okay. Now to give you an idea, oh, so this is the last thing that I've, I've been working on actually. I'm, I'm trying to uh, get this, uh, I'm trying to get these header files going. So I actually took that code and added all these header files and now I imported it in Eclipse. I tried to get everything done from there. This, this is just a professional programming IDE that uh, most uh, programmers use. And here you can see this, you know, you, 
you've got a lot more browsing capabilities and you can jump, you can right click on a function and just jump to it and see these contents and so on. All kinds of stuff that you cannot do in Arduino. And I proposed it to the group, hey, let's, let's switch to this, but they don't want to do it. The, the guy who controls it, um, he doesn't want other people involved and he uses the Arduino IDE. So whatever, it was uh, worth a shot. And uh, wow. when you get it all working, it can work. It's got, you know, this is an image that I took with the OnStep controller and- Oh my God. The resolution is pretty good. Um, so you don't see the full resolution here, but uh, yeah, no, it, it actually does work quite well. Is oh my God, that's that really nice. Is that single yeah. image or? Sorry? Is that stacked images or single image? Oh yeah, this is a, an hour and a half uh, of images stacked. Uh, okay. The exposure was, I believe, uh, one minute because I use a Fuji um, X-A1, which is a, a, a quite a sensitive camera, actually very good for astrophotography. Um, and if you expose for longer, then it just gets too, you know, it, it just overexposed, gets overexposed. So that's pretty much the limit. Just oftentimes just the, the light pollution here is enough to have to limit your exposure time. Um, but it's okay. That's amazing. I mean, uh, the advantage of stacking is that it actually uh, uh, increases the dynamic range uh, because, uh, yeah, anyway, just because of the math. Yeah, because the stack works in floating point. <laughs> uh, whereas the camera just collects the data in, you know, integers and it has a limit. So by just uh, taking shorter exposures at high ISO, you can actually get a pretty decent dynamic range. And uh, can, we, can, I inter can I interrupt one second? Sure. Okay. Uh, you you guys know that I just completed my 14 and a half inch telescope. So I, I looked at this with it uh, last week and that uh, spiral galaxy at the bottom, the first time I actually saw that it was an oval like that. So, uh, okay. Continue. <laughs> it's just when I saw this, I go, wow, I saw that. That's either, thir that's either 32 or 110. I can never get them right. <laughs> 110, I think. Yeah. Is that 110? Yeah. yeah. 30, 32 is on top of Andromeda there. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, that's 32. Okay. Yeah. 110 is perpendicular. Yeah. But you said that was a little spiral. Yeah, well, it's not a spiral. I, I meant uh, elliptical. Okay, good. Okay. Misspoke. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> God, Hank, this the, the image is uh, unbelievably just really nice. Yeah, yeah, it, it was actually an accident because this was the first time I tried it, or actually it was no, it was the second time I tried it, and the first time I got I got uh, star trails <clears throat> and I couldn't figure it out. I was oh man, I put in all this effort and now it, dang it, it doesn't work. So I tried it the next night again. I was going to debug this, and. Um, uh, I started looking at it in detail and I found out that this, the trails were in the declination direction, which is kind of odd because usually you expect the trails you know, to go in the RA direction, that that's going to be your main problem. So you were, you were misaligned with the North Pole. No, no, it wasn't that because I, I had done my, my alignment very accurately. You know, I have a, so what was it? Well, it turned out, well, okay, so I, I, I when I saw it, that it was in declination, I thought, okay, well, I don't know what it is. I'm just going to disconnect the declination cable and I'm going inside, check my code and see what's going on. So I, I just left it running. I thought, okay, well, the, the fog is going to roll in and <laughs> whatever. But an hour later I came back and it was still clicking. And, uh, and so that's how this image started <laughs> happening. So oh. what it was is I, I created my own pin map in the, um, in the onset. So normally people, get the standard pin maps but me being me i had to create my own and actually and there was there was actually one for the system that i was creating um but i was doing a new configuration and i had uh, this thing now there was one pin uh, there was a bunch of pins that i actually overlooked and um they were hooked up to the uh, an led that that goes on every time um it's it goes on periodically for i think it was um well, I forgot exactly, but it's, it's some weather related on LED stuff that goes on and that was moving my declination. <laughs> it was hooked up to the oh. declination. Oh. It was a pin map definition that went wrong. And so I found it out later on and uh, fixed it and then the whole problem was gone. <laughs> so that was just funny. Hmm. 
Boy, it sure worked. Yeah. Um, yeah, we can, we can actually take a quick look at the uh, website of One Step because they have some interesting diagrams and also examples of, uh, you can see a lot of, you know, examples of, of people who did this with a Dobsonian or whatever. It's kind of cool to see that. So um, this says you are on screen share, new share. Um, I need a different window for my browser. Um, okay. You have to stop sharing and bring it back on with a new one. Okay, I think I, I think hopefully does. Um, okay, yeah, I, I'll just stop share and then I can get my um, browser up here. Oh, yeah, and the post enter the Zoom. I can. I think I can close that without being. Okay, so let me just. Uh, I'm, I'm going to. Yeah. Okay. On step. Hold on. I think we do. Uh, yeah. Okay. I'm bringing up the OnStep site in uh, the wiki, actually. Okay, let's go there. And now I'm going to share that. Let me if I can. Okay, so um, where's the share button here again? Mm. Please are joining start video. Oh, share screen. Okay. Um, here. Okay. Share. Yeah. Dodgers okay. won. So here's the OnStep page. Oh. So um yeah they have a showcase let's go over some simple designs um so here here's we've got a, an arduino uno over there and just a board and a stepper motor um that's just an example you know and then one uh level up this is if you have two motors you know it tells you what you have to do. It's pretty simple. You hook up a TNC 3.2 controller and a capacitor to protect. Uh, yes, you have to watch out. Some of the sometimes these stepper motors they can generate their own voltage if you turn them, and um, yeah, they can generate spikes. And uh, for that, you need a big capacitor to counteract it or some other things. There are special electronic devices that do that. Well, this is their blue. What they call their blue pill. Uh, let's see here. That's the board that you can just order from their site. So it's got uh, a power uh, sub board here. This is the STM. That's the cheap microprocessor. Battery, uh, access one driver, access four driver. So you can hook up a, a bunch of things. They've got some RG45 connectors for the motors. Wi-Fi, uh, EEPROM is on there as well. So it looks like this. For my taste, it was a little bit too detailed, and I just wanted some, something simple. I didn't need a weather or a Wi-Fi or what, <clears throat> so I just went with a custom off-the-shelf CNC board. But this is what a lot of people use. Okay. And you, they, yeah, so I think they have a shopping list at uh, one of these electronic stores that you can just download and order. Um, and there's one guy who main, maintains this. It's not quite my thing, but um, it's definitely viable. Um, so we must R32 with CNC V3. This is the one that, that I built. So this basically this guy here. Um, and then they've got, uh, the, uh, <clears throat> ramps 1.4. This is actually a very convenient one. Um, <clears throat> it's this board. It's basically built on around an Arduino 2560. And they've got, uh, at the top, you see five of these stepper, uh, uh driver, driver sections. So you can hook up five motors. And the nice thing about this is that if you want to use SPIDE for mode switching, you can just plug these drivers in. They have that uh, built in, so you don't have to route extra wires to, to, to your processor to have it do that. And that is kind of nice. I don't think they have a, an actual picture of a working system. Hank, hey, did you use the original um, Los Mandy uh, motors, or did you go to a, a larger motor? Well, they are original in the sense that uh, they go with that Celestron system that I, Celestron controller, but they are really uh, lousy stepper motors. They <clears throat> they can't even do go to. The motors that you're talking about are the... Uh, the, the original surf. ones, the one of the yeah. 492 controller, the original ones. Yeah, I have the ones with, with the 492 controller. That's right, yes. And they work, they work well. They work... Okay, for tracking. Uh, I have never used it with auto guiding. Um, mm -hmm. By that time, I actually, I, I did actually, you know, since I, my exposures are fairly short, 
the need for auto guiding is not that bad. Uh, <clears throat> For for one minute, if you have good polar alignment, it's not really a problem. So most of my exposures were just uh, non-guided. Later on, <clears throat> when I wanted to motorize the whole thing, in first instance, I went to uh, a company that's called Astro Gadget in the Ukraine. I don't know if you've anybody's heard of that, but they sell all, sell all kinds of uh, gear, just little things. It's, it's extremely useful stuff, and it's uh, very competitively priced. So it's, it's cheap stuff. It just takes probably six weeks to arrive because it's from the Ukraine. But I got their controller and I, I hooked it up and I had a lot of problems with it. It was just not working right. It was, uh, I think altogether it was like $200 or so. Uh, it came with stepper motors um, and it came with uh, also um, two metal pieces that I needed to hook up those uh, those stepper motors and I'm still using those. And I, I emailed back and forth with the guy, but. I had a lot of problems with, with actually with the Lasmandi itself as well, because it turns out that the cogwheel is not really round. That's one of the big problems. So, <clears throat> and it's also temperature sensitive. So the Lasmandi is really simple. It's got one big cogwheel and it's got like a worm um, gear that, that is pressed against it. In the form that I have it, it's just basically fixed. So you have to align it fairly precisely because you don't want to have backlash. Uh, you also don't want to squeeze it so it has too much friction. And because the cogwheel is not really round, that's a problem. So you have to always leave some backlash. And um, I tried to get it too tight. I said, so anyway, I, I was fighting the, that, that problem. I have it on both sides that I can tell it's not quite round, <clears throat> which is a disappointment. Um, and, and then also that system that I got from, from uh, Astro Gadget that was basically underpowered uh, it, the stepper drives just didn't seem to work well. They made weird noises and so on. And eventually I just gave up um, uh, and, uh, and went to one step. And this works a lot better, thankfully. Meanwhile, about the um, cogwheel not being around, what they now sell at Las Mandy is um, uh, spring-loaded worms. Uh, my model mount does not have that. Um, but... Um, yeah, it's a spring-loaded system that just presses the, the, the worm yeah. into the mount with a spring, and that's actually very nice. Um, however, um, one morning I was going into, the, into my man cave and looked at the thing and said, you know, I can do this myself, because the Lost Mandy um, has a worm gear that's protected by a, a little uh, shield uh, that's bolted into the mount. It's pretty solid. And... <clears throat> uh, one side of the uh, of the worm gear, you can actually loosen that thing and yes, uh, and press it into um, the 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 cogwheel with a little spring clamp made from sheet metal. <laughs> so I put cut a little piece of sheet sheet metal, folded it, put it on there, bingo, it, it worked. Um, there are two things that you have to do with that. There's, there's two, two pressures that you have to provide. The worm wheel, this, uh, the, the tangential pressure that I just described, just press it into the cogwheel, but also the, the, the tangen tangential one, um, this, the, the worm itself is loose and you have to press it into the left side of the mount. That's where the thing is. And so you can do that as well because there's a screw at the bottom and I, I looped some uh, rubber from an old uh, bicycle tube around it and it provides enough spring <laughs> pressure to it. So, <laughs> so I have my own, I now have my own spring loaded worms and that picture that you saw was taken with it. So it seems to work. <laughs> Fixing it with bubble gum, huh? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> it's kind of silly. I mean, yeah. It's too bad. It's it's really a kludge. That this uh, this whole. Uh, so what's what's the fix for that uh, that elongated uh, cogwheel? I mean, how how can you get around that? The spring loaded that you're talking about. Yeah. That's that's the, basically the fix. Yes. Yes. So yeah, it's you know it's it's a very big cogwheel, probably one of the biggest there are. It's just got 360. Am I right? Yes. yes. <laughs> I think, or was it 320? It's, it's 320, I think. A lot of teeth. Yeah. <laughs> and that's, that's yeah. the thing. I mean, the, 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 the larger the diameter of your cogwheel is, the, the, the less sensitive it is to all kinds of errors, right? That's why barn door drives work so well. That's why the AstroTrack that we looked at earlier has like a, an arm that's like uh, almost a meter long. The longer it is, the, 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 
the better it is for your error behavior, <laughs> for your tracking and everything. Um, so yeah, um, unfortunately, so it's very simple. So there's just that thing that you have to move and it has to be done. So the only thing that's missing is that you've got an accurate uh, cogwheel. Uh, so yeah, I, I, I talked with Scott Lasmandi on the phone and he admitted, yeah, they're not never, never really right precise. And, and so everybody who has an old Lasmandi um, just uh, <laughs> raise it uh, against it. You're, so you make it a little east heavy. So the mount has to push forward and, and there's no, no problem. Yeah. But not always. I mean, you have to think about that. And if you do a meridian flip, then you have to think about, okay, in which direction do I have to counterweight it now? And so on. It's just a bit of a pain in the neck. So it's he nice never designed it for photography. He, t he told me, really? I, yeah, the, the original design was never for photography. Yeah. And the original design had a tangent on mm -hmm. not, uh, for the deck and not a worm. And then everybody busted these chops yeah. about that. So. Uh, but I, I love the design. I mean, th this, this tripod that it has is so rock solid. It's just as solid as a mount, as, as, a, as a pier. You know, so, <laughs> and it's, uh, yeah, I like how it is built. This, this thing you have on the screen right now, mm -hmm. that, 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 that board, I mean, yeah. there's no way I could, I could, you know, run something like that. I mean, it just, uh, oh. it's. It... Oh, it, it's actually quite simple because you, you don't have to worry about any of this. <laughs> you just order the board. And you order your drivers, you plug the drivers into those slots, you just do two of them. And, and that's basically it. Then you, you go, you get your code from the on-step site and you uh, flash it and, and you're done. Oh, huh. So it's, it's really not that difficult. So, you know, Hank, um, going back to the, the, the uh, oh, see, see Bob, oh, Bill, see you, Bill. Um, on the camera that you, you used, you used a Fuji camera. Um, it, what, I, what I'm trying to get at here, you know, you you're, you use that with what scope and how come you could get that, the full frame of, of M31 there? It just seemed to me that, that, that you'd, have to, you'd have to do a lot of manipulating there. Um, okay, so, um, well, so the, the, how I could get the M31 in the frame? Well, first of all, it's a DSLR, so it has a fairly large sensor, right? This uh, Fuji is actually a system camera, so it's also pretty light. I use my uh, Mac Mute for that. So it's an F4.8 uh, system that has a fairly wide field of view. And that's that's all there is to it, actually. So yeah, that's huh. not, not difficult. Yeah, because it's a pretty big target. I, I just, it was so well, it was just so well focused. I mean, with stars are, pinpoints i just thought that yeah. wow you yeah know. It, right yeah well I, i'm just going to uh let's see here custom mounts dobsonian telescopes here uh let's see if we can find some examples of uh somebody who did a dobsonian uh let's see here okay so here's a dobsonian uh so there's an example of on step this guy, so, so you put the motor for a Dobsonian inside the Dobson mount and you add this 3D printed wheel and then you can, uh, you know, rotate it around as. Oh. And for, for, for alt, you also add a 3D printed cogwheel here and a belt around it. And there's the on-step controller. So this is what people do. Kind God, of, that's amazing. Yeah, it's, it's kind of cool. This is kind of clever to do to put the motorization inside the mount. It's yeah. I was kind of hoping that a guy named Gail Massey, who's a member of our club, he, you know, he's built some he's built some go-to platforms using uh, the. Uh, I don't think it was the stepper motors. It was the other the other one the uh, servo motors. The servo motors. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I think of Gail, I was hoping he would be here tonight to see this because he would really... Uh, uh, Tim, really Tim I, I invited him to this several times, but he uh, doesn't have the, and the Zoom technology on his machine and he's not, uh, both he and his wife don't like to have that. 
We've got okay. a we've got a recorded. He can see it after, right? Yeah. Tom, are you recording this? Yes, I am. Okay. You should probably yeah, tell everybody he'd, beforehand. He'd really like to see that. I mean, you know, Gail really yeah. gets behind this stuff. To me, it's it's well above my head. But boy, I sure enjoyed seeing this, Hank. It's really uh. Uh, it's almost, it's within my grasp, really, you know? Yeah, uh, here's, here's yeah. another guy. <laughs> Once you start getting into it, you'll find you, you can, it's pretty simple. Yeah, yeah, it is, it really is. Here's another guy who uh, built uh, the same system that I have, basically, uh -huh. a mount on the CNC V3, nice. or an EQ3 mount. You know, it all works. So the OnStep uh, website has all this stuff. It's just fun to browse through it and see what people do. Yeah. So, so Hank, so let me just run this by you. I have an old, I have an, an old EM11 mount from Takahashi, and okay. I think I said this last week that that when I got it, I was hoping to get the hand controller to use with it, and oh. since that time they don't they don't offer it anymore. You know, so oh. you can't get the the encoders for it, and it it sounds like. It, using the mount I have, I could do something with this and and really end up with some pretty good stuff. There you go, right there. Takahashi. So the person who converted to Takahashi. Yeah, that looks like, like kind of like my mount there. Okay, yeah. So, yeah, uh, so the OnStep does make a hand controller, but it's only for the OnStep you know, uh, control can system. You make, can you make the picture bigger of the white mount there? What is that? That looks like, uh, who's that guy that used to make custom mounts? Do you know the brand name on that or is that a custom mount? No, that's an NXP uh, Takahashi. Oh, is NGP, it? I should say. Okay. Oh, that's an NGP, okay. Yeah. Looks very hefty. Yeah, Looks I have like the little that. baby brother of that. That EM Eleven's real little baby one. Oh yeah. Hmm. Yeah. So I mean, um, OnStep could help you, but you'd have to replace the control system of the Takahashi completely in order to use the OnStep hand controller. Yeah, you know, that it, it it's just a you know the the mount itself was just uh, it, there's no controllers there's no encoders there's no nothing it's just it's literally you know if it's the mount itself then you could do it actually uh, that's speaking, what I'm thinking hand, hand controllers here's a, here are some examples ooh yeah oh this is the what you need to do this is another guy who's very active okay this I don't like this page let me see here um here okay so this is somebody who created a case for it see oh boy 108 messages <laughs> never mind oh wait well, here's some pictures okay oh this happens to be the same series of pictures that we were looking at so maybe this is actually a an on-step hand this, yeah this is an on-step controller you can see this is 3d printed <laughs> i'll be darned yeah, yeah, interesting. All right, well, so all kinds of things are possible here. Yeah, just just well, go I'm to, have to check out. But thank you very much, Hank. This is very good. Uh, yeah, I've got to check out too, <laughs> Hank. We'll we'll meet again. Nice guy. Yeah, okay. Hey, wait. Yeah, before before everybody goes, one just one quick idea I had is, uh, what do you guys think of starting an hour earlier next week? You mean six thirty? Yeah, I was thinking maybe an hour earlier might be better, but I, I just throw that out there. You guys could think about it during the week. That way you can get out on your telescope, huh? <laughs> yeah, it just, you know, I, yeah. It, actually, it's a clear night tonight. and I'm, But, yeah, it's no reason <laughs> other than that. I, I just think I thought maybe we met at the museum at 7.30 because we had to meet later because they had, you know, that was their thing. But now it doesn't matter because we do oh, it whenever we that's want. That's true. We can meet any time. Next, next week, of course, we'll be back on daylight wasting time. You know, are are we we voted to not go off of that, but somebody said uh, the governor's got to sign off on that. So I was I, I was never clear on that, but confused by it too. Yeah, so I I don't know what's happening, but yeah, but anyway, I don't. That was just a thought. 
six thirty. But is it next uh, week? I, I like the seven thirty time because it gives me time to ride my bicycle from work back home and have dinner. Oh. And, uh, you know. Well, whatever the rest of the group decides, I'm flexible. Okay, we yeah, need to seven thirty. I just thought. I just thought. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Split okay. the difference and go for seven. And, make it, and thank make it at seven. Yeah. Seven is fine. Yeah, seven might work. Okay. And for thanks, Hank. That was that was amazing presentation. Thank you. I really appreciate that was really it. Good. That was really good, everybody. Well, so thanks for for listening. <laughs> All right. That, that, that picture of, of M31 was just phenomenal. Just phenomenal. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. I've written a lot of notes. I'm going to be looking up a lot of websites. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I got. I mean, I got four pages of notes here. I took down everything, it, even though it's way above my head. You know, it, it'll come in handy somewhere. It's going to come yeah. in handy. Yeah, it's. And it's I'll just... try to post. I'll try to post this on YouTube pretty soon. So I'll, I'll, it seemed to work pretty fast last time. So I'll try it again. Okay. Really great. Thank you for the time, Hank. I really right. appreciate You're it. You're welcome. Okay. Thank you. Okay. That, was, that was wonderful. Thanks. Good job. Okay. Right. See you guys. See you guys. See you guys next week. All right.